Hello. Thank you for watching Taxpayer Alert. I'm Al Sagawa. I'll be your moderator and I'm representing the uh, Calaveras Taxpayer Association. These programs are, are designed to, to inform <coughs> the voter and the public um, about things that are important and have to do with government or other things that are, may not have anything to do with government. But uh, this show is, is uh, another great one. We have, uh, as our guest, uh, uh, Gary Tofanelli. He's supervisor in uh, Calaveras County, and he's running for election again. Gary, welcome. Thank you, Al. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit how you got involved with this, uh, this, uh, this business. <laughs> uh, well, it's been a while ago. Um, I was approached in 2008. I'd been just got off the grand jury. I was foreman of the grand jury, and um, I had a lot of uh, during that time what some of the things we were doing. Um, had a, spent a lot of time with the uh, county council at that time, Jim Jones, and Jim Jones uh, at that time told me, you know, you really should run for supervisor. I think you would be a good supervisor. And at the time, I had no political. Um, aspirations, no experience or anything um, at doing it. And so I told him at the first time he asked me, I said, no, nah, I'm running my business. I got a, I got a lot of things going on and I don't know if I'd have the time. And then um, I was asked again and I said, all right, I'll, I'll do that. I'll see what I can do. And I ran in 2008 and was elected. Um, and um, I walked right into uh, a big controversy at that time, if people remember that had been around, um, there was a golf course down in the west end um, of the county that was um, very much had two sides to it. And people were really it was a big issue. And I walked right into it. I remember and, that. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the first, and that was right from the get go. The minute I took office, um, it started and uh, got through it and um, um, ran again um, and I was defeated by Cliff Edson and then uh, I ran again in 2016 because a lot of people would call me, email me, saw me. Um, I'm in a community a lot. I've been invo I'm involved in a community in San, San Andreas, Valley Springs, Wallace. And they encouraged me to run again, and so I ran in 2016, and uh, was elected, and been on the board since. You're one of the few supervisors that actually is a businessman that writes checks and has to meet payroll. I do. <laughs> I did. I've retired from that business now. Uh, I sold it, but yes, I wrote checks and had to meet payroll, and yes, all of that had jobs and contracts that I had to complete, and yeah. That's, uh, well, uh, Gary, we have a number of items. Uh, the first one is a wagon trail project. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, the wagon trail project I've been involved with, actually the wagon trail project actually um, was coming to light. I don't know if a lot of people remember um, that we had to bypass Highway 4 bypass at Angels Camp. And when I first took office um, in 29, 2009, that project was just being finished. And then there was a lot of talk uh, about that we were going to finish, needed to finish off from Copperopolis to Angels to that stoplight. Uh, that road was very dangerous and um, it was um, a project that needed to be completed. Um, so I was kind of went to a lot of meetings during that time uh, in Bret Hart at Bret Hart High School, and um, then again I lost the election. So during the, during the time that I was off from 2013 to 2017, um, the, that board um, agreed to do um, that stretch of the highway uh, with the state and. Um, when I came back in 2017, since I'd already been involved in it prior, I knew what was going on. And so we moved forward on it because of the contract that was signed. And um, at, we, at that time, nobody really knew um, what we were going to discover um, as far as cultural artifacts uh, once we started that project. 
And um, I'm being told that it is one of the largest uh, sites of cultural artifacts that have been found during the construction of a highway. Mm -hmm. um, just the number of them is, is astronomical. So it's, it's kind of, uh, it's not like we were just going to go in like we thought we were and just construct this highway and have it done and then we would have experience on it our staff would have experience and and our crew would have experience um it's really taken off on the cultural side of it to where it's delayed the project uh, because of the fact you need architects to go in um and archaeologists not architects archaeologists to go in and uh, the cultural the, to look at the cultural items along with the tribe and and it, then you have to go very slowly once you find an item you can't just bulldoze and go you have to take it takes a lot of time to go through it to make sure that there's nothing left there that's going to get destroyed right. um, so that's taken up a lot of money and a lot of time um, however today um, our staff went in front of the Cal California Transportation Commission and asked for an extension on um, some of the funding and they agreed to that and so, um, and that was due because of the time it's taken from the cultural artifacts. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they agreed to it, they, get, they approved it, and then we're supposed to go in front of them either in December or January asking for more funds to cover uh, what, because of the cultural artifacts and all the funds that, that have been expended that we need to cover the rest of the highway. Wouldn't uh the, the state be uh, better suited to run a state freeway? In other words, to well, to well, design and manage a state freeway? It, 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 it's, it's a highway, it's not a freeway. Okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, it's a highway. Um, I, I would agree, but at the time it was entered to, um, I wasn't there, and I'm not going to blame anybody else for it, because again, um, the thought was it was going to be just a, just go in, grade it, and take care of it, and, and have it done. The cultural part of it, um, I think, yes, the state would probably be better to, to do the construction because that's what they do. Um, and they also do the cultural side of it. They run into cultural items all the time. So I, I would not disagree with you, Al, yes. Um, but the, our staff and the county now has a lot of experience over all <laughs> of that now. So, but um, it, it, they would have been more suited to take care of the item. I don't disagree with that in any way at all. Okay, next item is animal shelter. Animal shelter? Yeah, I got a cat there. She's a sweetheart. You got a cat there or you got one from there? From there. You got one from there. Yeah. And what do you call your cat? Uh, uh, Crystal. Crystal. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah, the animal shelter is a big issue in the county for, for a number of reasons, and um, the grand jury's been on it for a number of years. Um, although this year, uh, their report was focused more on other things than actually the shelter itself. Um, we are moving forward on it. At first, the, the board um, voted 3-2 to not move forward on it and find some other direction. And during that time, um, I had went back to um, Teresa, our CEO, and asked her if we could bring it back to the board. And um, she agreed and we brought it back to the board and the, I got three votes to move forward on the drawing portion of it. Right. Uh, so we can have the architectural and the structural drawings for the building. And although the estimates at the first time was anywhere from seven to 10 million, yeah. um, when it comes back, um, and I, I will say that it's supposed to come back to us, supposed to be in November, whether it's the first one meeting or the second meeting, I don't know. But those drawings are supposed to come back to us. And, and it's kind of exciting to me because I've been in construction all of my life. I've held a contractor's license for many, many, many years. And, and once you get the drawings and you go through the drawings, we, we, have, we have land set aside for it and we have those drawings and we can look at them and maybe make some changes on them if we need to. But then we have a project because we have the land and we have drawings for construction. The county has about four million. I think we put a little bit more into it on this budget. So we may have around 4.1, 4.2 million um, to move forward on that. And that's a big plus 
uh, when you're looking for a grant, a matching grant, because you can show them that you have a shovel-ready project and you have matching funds set aside for it. So um, I think it's a big thing that could happen very quickly here, uh, going out to get a grant uh, to finish this project. And um, I would be looking for, um, it's been talked about doing in stages, but I, I would be um, more look to, to finish it off and do get a grant from plus our money to finish the whole project off and, and move forward because it's desperately needed. It really is. I don't know if you've been out there before, how many people have been out um, to our animal shelter right now, um, but um, yeah, it's, it's definitely needed. It has done anything. Uh, I think it was constructed in the 1950s, early 50s. I understand so, that the cat house is in good shape, but the dog, well, the, the, cat, the, the dog yeah. house <laughs> is where the problem is. The cat house is relatively new. It's not that big, but yes, the dog shelter is not up to par. <laughs> yes, and so I'm working to get the board to approve the drawings when they come and move forward. Um, in going after grants, sometimes there's uh, stipulations uh, that come with the grants that interfere with the uh, with the local governments to a certain extent. It's kind of like a fish hook that got a barb, and once once it's inserted, it's awful hard to remove that barb because uh, there's a constituent or there's a, a department or or something really dependent upon uh, getting these funds, and uh, so. In the case of the animal shelter, do we have uh, uh, much idea of what sort of stipulations will come with a grant? Um, we haven't applied for a grant. There's many different types of grants, and I understand what you're talking about. Yeah. So until we get this, the, the, this drawings um, accepted by the board right. and, and we move forward, there's a lot of different things that we can look at and a lot of different types of grants. Um, and I understand what you're saying, um, well, it and, have to be and I'm not interested in something that has, a, 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 like you say, a fish hook. Yeah. But if that happens, you know, most fish hooks um, have a line that you can cut. It's hard to cut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you can cut. <laughs> so, but I, I don't know what we're looking at until we get the, the drawings okay. done and we have a project in hand ready to go. Yeah. And then we can look and see what grants are out there available and what ties may have to them. And whether the board's accept because that was that would come to the board anyway. Yeah. It wouldn't we just wouldn't go out for a grant and and, and not bring it back for the board's acceptance. Okay. So. Um and next uh Costco Creek, uh clearing Costco Creek. Uh, apparently there's some controversy in clearing a creek. <laughs> <laughs> um Costco Creek, since I've been a supervisor, um and I was um way back started clearing it and um, have been successful on the board approving funds to clear that creek um, since I've been on the board. Um, th those funding, those funds come um, from somewhat public works funds. Some of it comes from public works funds, and some of it is added funds uh, to do a, a, a extra work. And then some of the funds, um, some of the work comes from uh, Cal Fire. But over the course of the last two or three years, as everybody knows, the fire um, season has been extended and it's been um, very volatile out there as far as fire. So Cal Fire has not been able over the course of the last two years to do a lot of work in that creek. So we've had to hire contractors. And last year we hired contractors and the board approved it. Um, I think last year we spent $110,000 to clear all the way from Gold Creek Estates all the way down to Silver Rapids Roads. And um, it did. It was very well, did good because um, we cleared a lot of it out. And then we were lucky that in November, Cal Fire was able to come behind the contractor and clear out more of what they couldn't because the permit that we have with Fish and Wildlife in the Corps only permits us to do so much work. And we, if there's water, uh, we can't touch anything that's in the water, um, like tules and things like that. Um, because of um, the um, the endangered species that may be lurking in there, and so um, but Cal Fire because they're state 
comes in and does whatever <laughs> he can do whatever but our contract won't let us um, and so um, this year Cal Fire started to work and um, they were pulled off in all different directions so uh, I brought it to the board um, and last Tuesday the last board meeting we had the 22nd um, they approved the board approved the hundred and five thousand dollars which was a quote that we got to go again all the way from Gold Creek Estates all the way down to Silver Rapids Road. And I, I want to say that we did have last year and they're doing a water management study, the Corps is right now, and it's supposed to be done in 2026, but they agreed with us and we got them because it was never brought up and nobody discussed it and um, that their releases when there's, when we have a lot of storm water and a big storm coming in um, that it raises the creek level but they release water from the dam in anticipation of water coming in and their releases were so heavy that where it converges with Costco Creek and Costco Creek trying to, to, to flow into it it was higher the river water was higher yeah. than the creek so it backed the creek up and that that was part of what was going on with the floods um so last year we had heavy rains and we had cleared the creek out and they didn't release water they really reduced the amount of water there and it really helped the fact that we didn't have um any floods at all, all right. with the amount of rain that we got so um we had some success huh that's success. It is success. The other thing I want to say real quick about, uh, you're going to mark on to item number four or three or whatever it is, um, that we did we we did last year because of the flooding in 2023 have a conversation with the Corps of Engineers, and uh, we were going to do at least um, some work underneath all of the bridges. I think there's four bridges all the way from Gold Creek Estates going down to Silver Rapids Road. Um, and we had got a quote from... Um, Hydraulic, hydraulic people, hydrology people, um, on putting together a plan to do that and clean out the creek, and they wanted over five hundred thousand dollars for that. And then uh, we needed a hydrology report, and that was an additional forty-five thousand. So just for the flans, it was over. It was like five hundred fifty thousand dollars, and um, they did say when it came back to us that um, just clearing it out and that within three to five years it would fill back up yeah. because of everything running down. So um, it, it, and, and the cost estimate was three to five million dollars to, to go through and clean it all out. Um, but that's, it, it would have, that would be every three to five years or maybe even if you got by with six, it depends on what's going on. So that's not the permanent solution to what needs to be done. So we're looking at other, another avenue right now that's been talked about in the past, but I think we're getting some forward on um, a retention pond that be, could be a park too. Oh, so, that's a good idea. Yeah. So. Uh, is, there, is there some improvement needed in the federal government and to uh, make these projects a little bit more reasonable? Um, I've been trying to get the federal government, the Corps of Engineers, to um, move on a lot of different things um, over the course of the years, and um, yes, but they have um, so many different things that they have to deal with as far as, um, and a lot of the things that we have issues with, in specifically Costco Creek, again, is endangered species. And, and that endangered species list keeps growing. I think they added a yellow-legged frog last year to the red-legged frog, and then the salamander, and then the elderberry bushes, and the elderberry beetles, and, um, and not destroying their habitat. And a Costco of Creek, if people go by it and look at it, just in front of Gold Creek Estates, um, the highway all the way to the fences of those people is all habitat. There may be a small part when the creek is flowing, not a whole lot before flood stage, um, 
that's not just it. It's the whole area. And that's a big area. And that goes all the way down to Silver Rapids Road. It's wonder, for endangered species. I wonder if uh, Congressman McClintock can be some help. Yeah. I've had conversations with McClintock. I've had conversations going back as far as Lundgren, uh, when Lundgren was in office. Um, it's very difficult. I even went to Washington one year and went and met with the general of the Corps of Engineers. Oh, really? Trying to get help from him. Yeah. And never heard back from him. So I, I, I will say this. In 2010, when I first came in in 2009, 2010, there was a study going on with CCWD and the Corps of Engineers and how to prevent flooding in Cost Cove Creek. And, and then the recession hit. And we were committing like $200,000 a year for those two years for this study. And CCWD was committing um, money to it. And um, when the recession hit, we had to pull off. So the Corps finished off their report and they came to us and told us that it wasn't a big enough um, project for them. Um, that <laughs> their suggestion is doing some retention ponds. Go up to stream and see what you can do with some retention ponds. But you still have to come back to us if you're going to touch those ponds and enlarge them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. All right. Next item is budget. Budget? Yeah. This is, okay. this is spending taxpayer money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what would you like to know about the budget? Do you have any specific questions you'd like to know about? Uh, well, Apparently, it's balanced. Is that true? It is balanced. Um, and that's good. It is. There's a small structural deficit, and what people don't know, and to explain a structural deficit, deficit doesn't mean that there's a deficit in the budget. It means that um, all of the budget is supposed to be um, done with money that you have coming in and not supposed to be one-time funds. Right. And so... Uh, we have about 1.9, 1.8, 1 1.9 of structural deficit. Uh, that's compared to several years ago, where it was 10 million, almost 11 million that we were using as one-time funding. But it, it, there's a lot of different things involved in there because in the budget, the state requires you to cover everything uh, with funds. Uh, you you can't not cover. Um, anything that might come up or you might be doing or you might be using funds for. Right. So so when you put out budgets to all the departments, you have to have the money available for that or a stream of money coming in for it. Um, but every year you come back, we do a budget. And every year that I've been a supervisor, at the end of the year, there's always a, a surplus. Um, and it's usually more than whatever um, that you use for a deficit. Although a couple of years, when it was ten million dollars, we didn't quite meet that. Um, but um, again, it's because you have to cover what you may or may not be using right. uh, during the year. And a lot of those had to do with f positions. If you have positions open in departments, um, and they're looking to hire people. When you go into the budget, you have to have that year's salary in the budget and the money allocated for it. It's not like you don't, you, you just wait till somebody's hired. And so a lot of times we didn't fill those positions and so that money came back at the end of the year as not being spent. But it counted against a deficit, a structural deficit. And that's just the way it's set up. That's the way the state's requirements are. Um, there was so. a controversy with teeter funds. These are, these are funds that, when you when the government finds people, and 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 as this money it goes to the department on an account. Well, teeter funds had to do with um, people being late on their property taxes, right? And and whatever percentage that was charged for being over on their property taxes went into the teeter fund. Okay. Yeah. It was just from property taxes? Yeah, just, just oh, from property taxes. it wasn't other things? No. Oh, okay. Other fines, that, those fines generally go to, like, uh, if you get fined for, from the building department. Right. right. That goes into their account. Is that called a teeter account? No. Okay. No. Teeter fund was basically um, 
property taxes, mm -hmm. which which people don't understand. You talk a little bit about a budget, uh, just so people can understand that don't know. Um, you write your check twice a year um, to the treasurer of, of Calaveras County for your property taxes. Those property taxes, every single penny of those property taxes, um, except for any bond money or any special district money, that goes to those di districts or to pay off the bond. Every other bit of that money goes all to the state. And then the state gives back to the county, either somewhere between 16 and 17% of those taxes. So we don't just keep 16 to 17%. We have to give it all to the state and then they, they determine on their budget whether we're gonna get 16 or 17% back. And during the recession I was talking about earlier, they're supposed to give us to us, I believe it's in January and September. We weren't getting payments until late and we weren't getting um, all of the 16 or 17%. A couple of times we only got like 13 or 14% and it was late. And we just had to deal with it with our reserves. So. Sound, sound like that. That, that system needs to be improved. Is that true? <laughs> what? It looks like that, that system it's, it is, could needs, be changed. needs improvement. I, I agree. But <laughs> we're a subsidiary of the state, and they tell us that. We, we, we are a subsidiary of the state, so whatever the state wants is what happens. And that happens a lot of things where they, um, they um, mandate things, but they don't give us the money right. to pay for it. It's up to us to take care of it. Um, that's just the way the system works. Well, the last item we have is the DA building. The district attorney's building. Yeah. And we got like one minute to talk about yeah. it. Is that what we have? Yeah. Okay, the DA building, um, I believe, is coming back to the board sometime in December. Um, I think it's it's moving forward. There's like, I believe, five over $5 million for that building. Um, and it will be going where the old jail used to be on that property there. And I look forward to see what's coming to us in December um, All right. to get that building done. I think it really needs to be done. It does. <laughs> Gary, thank you very much for being our guest. And You're thank welcome. You for I'll watching, thank, for... thank you for watching Taxpayer Alert. See you next time. <laughs>